and we laid out the vectors. We're just going to write the actual coordinates for cosine and sine of these numbers. So cos 150, negative something. Is that negative square root 3 over 2? Comma, sine 150 should be 1 half. Cos 45, sine 45, those are easy. 1 over square root 2, 1 over square root 2. So now we have the gravity force and both of the forces in the ropes, or cables, or whatever we call them. So we're going to set up static equilibrium. So static means not moving. So that means we're going to have the zero vector, and we're in two dimensions. So that will be the zero, zero. Uh, vector and that is FG plus F1 plus F2. So we add up all the forces and we want them to equal zero or no force. So now all I'm going to do is write out the three vectors. So at the top, so zero, negative 1200 plus F1 we said was R1. And I'm going to actually distribute into here. Distribute the R1 into the vector. And same thing on this vector. Oh, R2 looks just like square root 2. So F1, negative square root 3 over 2, R1, comma, R1 over 2, plus last vector, R2 over square root 2, comma, R2 over square root 2. All right, so how do we add vectors together? I think you've added them before. We added them in this section. Same way you add complex numbers, same way you add what else is like this? Combine like terms, basically. So you add up your x's and add up your y's separately. So do everything in the x-coordinate, add those up, and then add your y-coordinates up. So we're going to get 0 minus square root of 3 over 2 r1 plus r2 over square root 2, comma. So all I did was went down and picked the x-coordinates, added them together. Now I'm going to add up all the y-coordinates. So we get negative 1,200 plus R1 over 2 plus R2 over square root 2. And when are vectors equal? Vector equality. What has to be true about each? What's that? Yeah, so you go coordinate by coordinate. So your x has to match your x, your y has to match your y. There's no z here, but there's really two equations. I'll underline the first equation. So it's going to be 0 equals that number or that quantity. And then I'll put two underlines on the second equation. So there's really two equations in a vector equation here. If I was in three dimensions, there would be three equations, one for each coordinate. So we get 0 equals negative square root 3 over 2 r1 plus r2 over square root 2. And the second equation, that's the x equation, the y equation, negative 1200 plus r1 over 2 plus r2 over square root 2.
So this is now a Algebra 1 problem. Maybe Algebra 2. We have a system of two equations, and they're both linear. So two linear equations, two unknowns. There's three ways to solve it. What is one way? Substitution. So solve for R1 or R2, plug in the other one. What's another way? Elimination. Elimination. There's a third way you learn in pre-cal 1, hopefully. You can't graph uh, Bowie's matrices. And you could go Kramer's rule if you really wanted to. So that's a third way to go. I don't think uh, these equations are that difficult. I think that probably either substitution or elimination will be good here. Uh, I personally prefer elimination usually. So is there an easy? It's a really annoying noise that I can do nothing about. Oh, what if we subtract them? Wait, something's not right up here. If you multiply the bottom equation by negative 1, you'll get on top R2 over R2, and then you'll have minus R2 on the bottom, and you don't get the We would. The only problem is these, uh, one of these equations is wrong. Where's the error? We will be doing something just like that when we have the correct equation up here. Uh-oh, and there's an error line above, too. Somewhere, a 2 turned into a square root 2. No, no, it didn't. No, oh, I'm just crazy. OK, good. There's no errors. So what if we just basically add them together, but we'll actually be adding it with a negative 1 on the second equation? So we, or you could say we're subtracting equations. So that'll cancel out R2 right there. So I'll subtract the two equations, cancel out R2. So we have 0 minus 0 equals negative square root 3 over 2 R1 minus negative 1,200 minus R1 over 2. Now, if you want to, you can write plus R2 over square root 2 minus R2 over square root 2, but that was the whole reason that we subtracted the two equations, is to cancel out R2. So any questions on, well, I grouped up these for no good reason. Oh. oh, cool. It shouldn't be. I'm not All right. So I probably should have put that inside there as well. So it would have been f formed nicer. I wasn't really planning to write that last, those last two terms, though, because they cancel out. All right. So they're out. And we have 0 equals. We'll put all the R1 terms first minus R1 over 2 plus 1,200. All right, how do you solve this? This is a linear equation in one variable. This is basic algebra 1. So I know you're not stumped. I sleep R. What's that? I sleep R. Yep, so we need to isolate the R. So combine like terms, get everything that's not R out of there. So go ahead and do that. Yeah, so we gotta combine them. So factor out is how to do it. So your first step is something times R1. So go ahead and finish this off. I'll give you another 10 seconds to do it. You just have to factor, subtract, divide.
So any algebra questions getting down to R1? Usually they use a letter X, I'm just using R1, but everything should feel just like Algebra 1 class on the screen. So we got R1, how do we get R2? There we go, so, well yeah, but which, where do we plug it in? That's definitely important. Yep, so we'll, uh, we'll use the first one, it's got less stuff in it. So we'll go with the first equation here. And I'll go ahead and add that negative square root 3 over 2 r1 to the other side equals r2 over square root 2. So now we're going to plug in the, let's see, the r1 value. Oh, that r2 looks just like square root 2. So we have square root 2, square root 3, r1 over 2. So that's square root 6. r1 is 2400 divided by square root 3 plus 1 over 2. There's not very much to do. You could write that as 2 over 1 multiplied by the reciprocal. That makes 2400 into a 1200 divided by square root of 3 plus 1. That's R2. Our attention in cable 2. Now if you get a decimal for these, that'll tell you the uh, approximation in pounds of force going that direction. So that was just linear algebra that we did at the end there. And getting back to the original problem, basically what we did, the intuition of what we did, is both of the cables, the tension forces, pull not necessarily in opposite directions, but one pulls to the right-ish, and the other one pulls to the left-ish, and you have to add those right and left up to get zero. And if you think about where that uh, equation is, that is one of the two equations. Let's see. The top equation is the left and the right force for each vector have to add up to zero. The second equation is the upwards force of each vector it has to cancel out the gravity. So they don't add to zero, but when you add them up, they better cancel out gravity. So you have to balance the left-right in the first equation, and the second equation you have to counter the exact amount of gravity. So if it weighs more, that number just changes, basically. Uh, if the angles change, it changes everything. But if all you do is increase the weight or decrease the weight, that 1,200 changes. So that is the end of 11, 8. Now we're going to get into 11.9. On Canvas, did I put the reference for cross product yet as an announcement? It probably would have been an announcement on like the first day of class. I don't know. I'll check it out. Yes. Factors. When you say factors. Uh, vectors. Oh, vectors. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'll go and change your homework dates for sure. All right, dot product and projection. So I told you that vectors, you can't directly multiply vectors, but there are two ways you can sort of multiply vectors. So one of the ways, the easier, certainly the easier way to perform uh, the multiplication is a dot product. We will look at cross product as well. That takes a little more time to actually compute. Uh, both have useful properties. The dot product has a lot more properties. So we'll spend way more time in the dot product properties. Uh, 
And we'll just start right with the definition. So we have two vectors. We'll go with, let's go with u and v. If they're in two dimensions, actually, let's start subscript here. We'll name them both v, v1 and v2. This will be a1, b1, a2, b2. So the dot product, the symbol for the dot product is a dot. Not surprising. But if you use a dot for multiplication, you probably should stop doing that. But I like to make my dot for dot product big. So I don't want to just put a small dot like that. I want to make sure I can see the dot. So it doesn't look like u uh, v times another vector. Make sure it looks like a dot product. So dot product is it's sort of the easiest multiplication you could perform that makes sense. You multiply x's, multiply y's, and you add those two products together. So that's what dot product looks like in two dimensions. So this is in R2. If we go to three dimensions, now at some point you're going to wish you didn't have to write commas everywhere, especially when you have subscripts. So I'm trying to make my commas slanted a little bit so they don't look like my ones. Or else it's going to look like A11, B11, etc. All right, dot product. How is this different from the two dimensional dot product? So we got C's. So we're going to do the exact same thing that you think we should do with the C's, which is multiply them, add them at the end. So we got A1, A2, plus B1, B2, plus C1, C2. And this is in three dimensions. You can probably see what happens in four dimensions, hopefully. It's the exact same thing that you expect happens in four dimensions. So that is the definition of the dot product. Uh, the dot product, it's a function that accepts two vectors and gives you a real number. So if I write out the dot product as a function, it's a little bit strange, but dot product goes from, it's a little bit strange, but it goes from Rn times Rn into R. So it takes some vector, we'll call it I'll use the letter A, A1, A2, AN dot. I'll use all Bs for this. I know that's bad because I just used A and B separately in different ways up top. But the problem is I don't know how many uh, dimensions we're in. So I can't just write A, B, C, D. I don't know what letter is at the end. So we got B1, B2, Bn, and this goes to the number a1, b1, a2, b2, an, bn. So it's a strange function because it accepts two things that are not numbers, that are vectors, and actually gives you a number. So it's a function in a uh, very, it has a very different domain than you're used to although the range is real numbers. So the range is very familiar. So that is one way to think of the dot product. So let's do an example. So we'll do a two dimension. I don't want to say what dimension this is yet. So we got two i. Um, Minus 3j 
that's v, and u is 4i plus j minus k. So what dimension does it appear that these vectors are in? Two and three. So we need to put them in the same dimension. So there is, I could write an invisible, how many k's? So we could write plus zero k. So there are no k's there. So I like to, when I'm going to find a dot product, I like to take, and I want to find u dot v. So I like to put the vectors above and below each other and write them in diamond notation. For me, that's a very nice way to, to find the dot product. So I'm going to rewrite u in diamond notation, which is 4, 1, negative 1. And v, I'm rewriting as 2, negative 3, 0. The reason this is good is because if you just go down each column and multiply and then add up those terms, that's how you get the dot product. So go ahead and multiply coordinates, add them together. Any questions on that operation there, getting to five? So that was part one, let's do part two. Find v dot v. So take v and dot product with itself. Yes? Is that parenthesis four or one? Um, four, yeah, parenthesis. So it's four times two? All right, so take v and dot product with itself. So you can write two v's, one above the other one, and then just go down the columns and multiply. So you should have gotten four, two squared is four, plus negative three squared is positive nine, add those together and get 13. So any dot product questions on, on this one? What property of V is this very similar to? So we just did a whole section on vectors. What property of vectors is this similar to? So, well, the, but this, this specific dot product here, what property of V is this very similar to? This should feel familiar. What operation did you take the components of V, square them, and add them together? I just wrote on the board, magnitude. What else did you do in magnitude that you didn't do in this dot product? Square rooted. So how does magnitude relate to a dot product with itself? I don't want to have the square root on the left, so I'm going to square it. So that'll knock out the square root part, and that will give me the uh, dot product. So that is one property of a dot product. Dot product with a vector with itself, you get not the magnitude, but magnitude squared.
So these, this is a start of our properties. So magnitude squared is dot product of itself. And it doesn't matter what order you dot product your two vectors, u dot v is the same as v dot u. Because all you're doing, if you think about the operation you're actually performing, you're multiplying. It doesn't matter if I did 4 times 2 or 2 times 4. It doesn't matter if I did 1 times negative 3 or negative 3 times 1 at the same thing. So we have this property. It's called commutative property. So our properties, we need u, v, and w are vectors. And I think we only need one scalar. So we'll go with alpha is scalar. So we don't call it a product for no reason, aside from the fact that you, when you perform it, you're actually multiplying. So you're creating products when you compute this. It also has the distributive property. So I can have the product of u times the sum as the u times v plus u times w. The only difference is when I say times, I mean the product that we're using here, which is dot product. So it's u dot v plus u dot w. And that's distributive property. Basically, if you have a distributive property, it's called a product. So that's generally what defines, what separates a product from just some operation. So it's distributive property. What about taking the zero vector times or dot product with any vector? Obviously, they need to have the same dimension. But what happens if your vector is filled up with zeros and you dot product with any other vector? Yep, so all the zero coordinates, when you multiply with any number, they all turn those products to zero. So you're going to get the zero vector back. Now, multiplication, scalar multiplication is uh, very compatible with the dot product. What that means is it commutes. So I can write this as, we'll go with alpha first. So I can write it as alpha times the dot product of u and v. Oh, I shouldn't change the order. You can also push alpha into the second vector like that. Be careful if you copy down my v's. My v's don't have a sharp point usually. My u's have a foot. So make sure you're careful about how you write them. So this is commutative property <coughs> or commutes with scalars. I think that's all the properties we'll need, all the algebraic properties we're going to need.
So we have two vectors. I want to make a triangle with these two vectors, not necessarily a right triangle. Maybe if U has the exact correct length, it might be a right angle, but in general, it's not going to be a right angle. How do I get the third side of this triangle? And I can go through and redraw. There's a U, and that is a V right there. So I just copied U and moved it over, and then copied V and moved it over as well. How do I get the blue vector? Think of going head to tail. It's not u plus v. If I go u and then another v, my blue vector would end up over here. That's u plus v. So what if I say you have to go u? How do you get back to this point up here? So if you start at the bottom and then go across u, so we're going to go this path. How do I get back to where I want to be, which is the top of this arrow? How do I go this way? That'll be, yeah, either subtract V or add negative V. So I want to turn V around and then go the opposite way. So what I want to do is use U and negative V. So U plus negative V, we could just write that as U minus V right there. So that is our third side. And let's take off all this stuff here. Because it's not a right triangle, I can't apply the regular right triangle Sokotoa stuff. So I'm stuck with law of cosines or law of sines if I want to describe any relationships here. So with the angle I drew, law of sines isn't good because I would need to know uh, a different angle in here to relate things with law of sines. So we're going to go law of cosines. The only problem is law of cosines uses side length, not vectors. So how do I get the side length? How do you take a vector and get a number out of it? How do you take a vector and get the length? There's three words for it. Magnitude. magnitude. So we're going to go magnitude of each of the three sides. That's going to be the lengths right there. So we're about to apply a law of cosines. And of course, we need to be using the side lengths, which are going to be magnitude u, magnitude v, and magnitude u minus v. Those are the side lengths right there. So a law of cosines, the square of one side equals the sum of the squares of the other two. minus 2 times their product times cos theta. Hopefully that's right. Cos theta. Yeah, so that is law of cosines right there. I think we used a little a, b, and c before, and then big a, b, or c for the angle that we're using. So we just had to switch that up a little bit here. Now we're going to spend a little time simplifying this. And the way we're going to do that, there's really nothing you can do in this form. So what we're going to do instead is rewrite all these magnitude squares as dot products with themselves. So u minus v of magnitude squared, u minus v dot u minus v. Uh, what is misleading about leaving u minus v dot u minus v like written like that? What operations should you perform first in order of operations? Multiplication. So multiplication. But we really would need to subtract first before we do the product. So we need to rewrite it with parentheses like that. And the right side is a little bit easier. Just u dot u plus v dot v minus 
there's not much I can do to these magnitudes because they're not squared. So I pretty much have to leave them alone. All so on the left side, we're gonna use the distributive property here. So I'll zoom in a little bit to the left side. So the distributive property works like, I think the way I wrote it, we can take the first vector and distribute it like that. So we're gonna take that first vector, u minus v dot u minus u minus v dot v. So I use the distributive property right there. So any questions on that distributive property? If you're having trouble seeing it, just think this is one vector that I just circled in pink. I distribute that vector across the other two. So what do you think we're gonna do next? Distribute again. We're gonna distribute, so there's two. We're gonna distribute like this and distribute like that. Just make sure you're careful about both of the, uh, the negative of negatives. So these, this is u dot u, oh, u dot u minus v dot u minus, I'll go with the parentheses here, u dot v minus v dot v. And we'll straighten out the signs here, and I'll write them alphabetically. So I'm writing this v dot u is u dot v minus u dot v plus v dot v. And what easy algebra move can I make here? What can I do to the middle terms? Can I cancel them? But I can combine like terms, there's two of them. So u dot u minus two u dot v plus v dot v. All right, so we rearrange the left side to be this. What you don't want to do, or what you shouldn't want to do when you're doing uh, Algebra one side of a very large equation is write the right side 15 times in a row. So I didn't change the right side at all. I just messed around on the left. So what I get to do is just copy over the right side. So I didn't do anything on the right side, so I just brought it down. Now we get to subtract stuff and start canceling. So what can I subtract from both sides? U dot U. So what we're gonna do is just start canceling. So if I subtract U dot U, it's gonna cancel out U dot U on both sides. I do the same thing, V dot V, with subtraction, and knock out the V dot V, and we're down to negative two U dot V equals negative two magnitude u, magnitude v, cos theta. All right, easy algebra move. What should I do next? Yep, so cancel out our negative two by multiplying both sides by negative a half or dividing by negative two. So we can be clever with the blue pen and cancel out basically a negative two right there. So we're gonna get u dot v equals magnitude u, magnitude v, cos theta. And now the last step is I'm going to just solve for cos theta. So we have a nice formula for cos theta. And that formula is not too bad right there. Started out with something way worse.
memorize. So we stopped using cheat sheets. I want to get the section right. It was in chapter 10, and I think it was 10. Was it chapter 11? No. I think it was the trig identities that we got them all when they, we had the crazy identities near the end. Somewhere. Yeah. So way back in 10.4 is where we stopped basically using the cheat sheet. So there's a lot you have to memorize after that. So we'll do our first example, find the angle between. Uh, U is 4i minus 3j, and V is 2i plus 5j. So if I want to solve all the way for theta, I just take cos inverse of both sides. So it's cos inverse u dot v, magnitude u, magnitude v. So that is how you solve all the way for theta. Just do cos inverse on both sides. So the three things you have to compute, the dot product of u and v, that should be pretty easy. And then magnitude u, magnitude v, and then just write up all those quantities, just like it is at the top of the board there. Now, if you do this problem on a quiz or a midterm, I recommend write down your, well, at this point, final, write down your intermediate steps. So don't just write down, oh, I can do uh, magnitudes in my head and dot products in my head, so I'm just going to write down the values. If you write down the wrong values, I can't really give you any partial credit. So make sure that you go and show me u dot v, the dot products you got, the magnitudes you got, and then put them into the cos inverse function.